Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and I'm back with another Stardust tutorial for Superluminal.tv. Let's take a look what we are going to create in this tutorial. This time we will focus on the ability of Stardust using 3D objects as particles. All the elements that you see in this intro here are created with Stardust, so we will take a look how we can import OBJs and use them as elements in Stardust and we will also create this nice backdrop here with all these 3D elements. We will create a few nice materials, add some textures and use all the awesome stuff that Stardust offers when it comes to 3D particles. So let's jump right into After Effects and let's start this tutorial. Before we start the tutorial, please make sure that you have the Stardust plugin installed on your system. If you do not have it already, then jump over to their website, which is www.superluminal.tv and there you can get Stardust and you also can get a free trial version. In After Effects, first of all, let's create a new composition and I will use the HDTV preset. Call this my main composition and I will make it 250 frames long. And inside my composition, I will create a new layer and call it Stardust 3D. And I will add the Stardust effect to my layer. And now you see that we have a few particles here emitting. Let me quickly turn off my adaptive resolution here. And let me set this to half resolution that everything works a little bit faster. Now I want to import a few 3D objects. To import 3D objects, there is a nice simple way. You can simply select your Stardust layer, then inside the Effect Controls panel, just click on the presets to browse the presets. And then we can just use these models presets here. And actually we can use any of these, doesn't really matter. Maybe this one, this is also the material applied and click replace. And this way you just spare a few clicks. Now I have the emitter already set up so that it emits only one object and the particle is already set to model. And there's also a model node and a material node. So you can save a little bit of time if you use these presets. Now let's take a look how we can import OBJ models as particles. Therefore we choose the model node here and inside the model node you know we have a few different options. We can choose primitives, text, masks and we also can choose file and in this case I want to use file. So click on file and then you see the file properties open up and we can click on this all here and then you can browse to the location wherever your OBJ is saved. By the way, you can download the project file of this tutorial and all the assets on the superluminal.tv website. So the first OBJ that I want to import is the Stardust 3D logo base OBJ and I select this, click OK and then you see I have this option here to import materials. If you check this import materials box then Stardust will import the materials that are included in your OBJ and if you do not want to import materials then just uncheck this box and it will just import the OBJ without any materials. Stardust can also read so-called material files, MTL files. So if you have MTL files according to your OBJ, then Stardust can import a few more parameters like textures and so on. So if we check materials and if we click OK, you will see what happens. Now Stardust imported my model here, which is a little bit too big right now, and it also created this material node that's called base. And this is actually exactly the material that I created inside Cinema 4D when, when setting up this project. And now it also imported this material slot here. So let's delete this material because we do not need this. Actually, my base only has one material applied. And now we'll go to my settings and take a look so that we get a nice size here. And actually I think I will do this in the particle size. You can change this in the particle size. You can also change the size of the model right here in the model node and size. But just for now I will set this to one. And now I have my disk here. And I want to add a few things that we can see this a little bit better. First of all, let's create a new light. And in this case I will take a parallel light. That's fine. Okay. And I also want to create a new camera. 
So let's create a new camera and I will take a 24 millimeter camera. And I will also create a new null object, which I turn into a 3D layer. And then I just link my camera to my null object because this will be my cam control. And now I simply can use the rotation of my null object here to change the angle of my camera. So you see what we have got here now. I have a nice disc here and we can move in with the camera a little bit closer here. So that we see what this is. Actually, it is a, a disc and it has a small extrusion. And yeah, this will be the base of our logo. Now let's change the position of this light quickly. So I will go to my four views here just to see a little bit more what I'm doing and I choose my light. And what I want to do is I just want to change the position. So bring it up a little bit. And actually what you can do, you see now this point of interest here is moving with my light. So to make this positioning of the light a little bit easier, let's just parent our point of interest here to our null. And therefore I can come in here on my light layer and open this up and then transform. You see, we have the point of interest here. Now let's select the position of my chem control null. Hold on Alt and click this stopwatch here to create an expression. And now I can just pick whip and link it to the position of my null. And now if I select my light, I can move it. And you see that the point of interest will always stay in the middle of our scene, which is quite useful in this case. And I just want to move this up a little bit that we can see a bit more of the light here. And this looks good. Okay, so now let's take a look at our object here and at a few settings that are important when working with OBJs. I will change the resolution to full for now that you see the full resolution and the full quality of this. If we select our model node, let's take a look at a few settings that we have. If you run into some problems with the normals, here you have the option to invert normals. Sometimes this can fix errors. And you also have the options in the model properties to flip the axis. And this is useful if your 3D software has another coordinate system. So in this case, you see that Y and C are flipped. And if I undo this, then you see that it is just upside down, which is not right. So I can flip these two. Then you also have the option to choose double-sided. This can also have an effect on the normals depending on your model. And you also have the option to select smooth normals. Now, if you take a close look here, you see that I can see the polygons here. And if I click smooth normals, then this will be smoothed out. And this is controlled by the smooth angle threshold that we have got here. So if I set this here to zero, then you see that the polygons appear again. And if you set this to a high value, like, I don't know, 100. This could mess up or change the look of your model quite a bit. So make sure that you have the right value in here. This is more or less exactly the same as the Fung tag in Cinema 4D. Okay, now let's import two other models here. And what I can do here is I just can use the emitter and the particle here to create the other models as well. So I will just create a new model node here and link it to my particle. And then I go into my model node, my new one, and I will import another OBJ. This time I will choose my ring, logo ring, click OK. Make sure that import materials here is selected. Click OK. And you see now Stardust imported the ring and it also imported or added this material node here. Now inside the ring model node, so let's rename these quickly. This is my base. And this model is my ring. Inside my ring model, I can again check the smooth angle and set this back to 10 and then this should be fine. Yeah, looks good. Now let's create a new model node and let's import a new model. 
and this time I want to import my Starter 3D logo. Click OK, Import Materials, OK. And you see now Stardust created two materials. And this is because this OBJ has two materials applied. So now again in our model node, let's rename it. Let's name it logo. And let's make sure that our smooth normals is activated. Now you see we get these strange artifacts here and this is related to our smooth angle here. So let's turn this down to something like 10. And now the surface of our model looks good. Okay, all our models are in place. Now I want to create a quick animation. First of all, let me make this invisible here because then it's not in the way here. And now we will take a look how we can animate these objects here. To animate these OBJs, we can of course use all the different options that we have for particles. And we also have this origin here where you can change the original position, something like an anchor point. But if you want to really control the animation of a 3D object, then you should use the so-called inherit motion option. You can control the positions here using null objects. And let's do that. So let's create a new null object, make it 3D. And let's call this one here ring. Now I duplicate this by pressing Ctrl D and I call this here logo. And now I will set up a quick animation. So let's go to our Stardust layer and select our logo model node here. And then we choose in the inherent motion null, we choose the logo null. And inside our ring node, we choose the ring null. Now with my logo node here, I want to create a quick animation with the position. So let's move to frame 20 and here I want to move this out of our side. So let's move it up quite a bit. Sorry for this strange looking numbers, but this has to do with the latest version of After Effects. I don't know what's happening here, but the layout on my 4K screen here is kind of messed up. So I hope that Adobe will correct this with an update soon. So let's put in here, I don't know, something like zero or whatever, so that I move it up to the screen here, that it's out of sight and set a keyframe. And then I will move forward to around 95 frames or so. And I will set it back to 540, which will bring it back to its original position. Now, let me just move my camera out a bit again that we can see what's happening here. You see now it is just animating in and then it is just setting, sitting in place again in the end here. Now I can add a little bit of rotation to our null. So let's select it, press R. Let's bring in the position by hold down shift and press P. And I want to add a little bit of rotation to make this a bit more interesting. So let's say in the end here, the rotation should be zero, of course, so I do not need any rotation here. So I will set a keyframe here for the X, the Y and the C rotation. And now let's move to our beginning and let's change this a bit. Maybe something like, don't know, about 200. And let's rotate the C as well. Maybe something like 300. Let's take a look how this looks like. And you see now this is falling down and looks good, but we need to change the rotation a bit. So let's come to our rotation. Let's select both of these values and let's open up our graph editor. And I just want to ease these curves here a bit so that the rotation is finished before the logo is back in its original position. Let's take a look here. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. You can, of course, play around here and make this even better. So for now, this is fine. I will also change the position quickly. Uh, let me just separate the dimensions because actually I do not want to animate the X and the Z position. So I will use only the Y and I can create a quick smooth animation here as well, like so. Now you see it starts, comes down, and then nicely lands in our base here. Now let's create a quick animation for my ring here. To do that, I select my ring now, press P here, and then I will 
separate the dimensions here as well. So right click on the position and choose separate dimensions. Now let's link our Y position here to our logo now by pressing Alt and clicking on the Y position. And now let's just pick with these two values here. And now you see that our ring will move with the logo. So you see it is taking over the position, but not the rotation, which is quite nice. And now we could add some rotation here as well. So let's copy the rotation keyframes here, the X and the Y. Copy and paste it on the ring rotation here. Now let's see what this does. Now they're rotating exactly the same. And now I just want to offset these values a bit. So something like that. And maybe something like that. Let's take a look what this does. Now both of them are nicely rotating and then they land in our base. Okay, so far so good. Now you see how you can animate 3D objects using nulls and using stardust. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting and more beautiful by adding some materials and an environment and so on. First of all, I want to create some nice materials and therefore I go to my base material first of all and let's take a look what we've got here. We have diffuse, glass, bump, all these options. And what I want to do now is actually I want to create quite a glossy and reflective material. And if I set this now to let's say 80 on the glass amount and 85 on the reflection amount, you see that something's happening, but it is turning black. And this is because we have nothing to reflect. So we need to import an environment. To import an environment, I will simply move to my project window and double click to import. And now I will import a texture. And I will also import a paint crunch texture. So choose both of these files, click import, and then we will create a new composition by dragging it on this composition here. And I will call this environment. And I will drag this environment now into my main composition and make it invisible. Now with my Stardust 3D layer selected and in the effect controls panel, you see we have these render settings here. This is right under the Stardust settings. There is this render settings tab. And there you can find the environment tab. And here we can specify a layer, which will be our environment. So let's choose the environment composition. And now you immediately see something is happening here. And you see that my base, which I made reflective, now really reflects our environment and looks way more interesting. To make this even more interesting, you can add textures to certain parameters here. So for example, to the gloss. I also imported this grunge texture here. So let's create a new composition here as well. And let's call this glass. And let's drag this glass composition into my main comp and make it invisible. And with my Stardust base model here, I choose in the gloss texture here, my gloss environment or my gloss composition that I created. And if we take a look now, what this does, you see now I have this texture applied. And now if we take a look at my gloss, then you see wherever it is white, the glossiness will be set to the value that I set in my material settings. And where it is black, there the gloss will be turned off. We can manipulate the look here by adding, for example, a tint here. So let's add a tint to this JPEG. And now I can say, I do not want this to be so dark. So I want to reduce the contrast here a bit. So let's change this to something like that. And if we take a look now, you see that I can change and manipulate the look here. And if I go to my glass again and say, no, this is not what I want. So maybe, you know, like so, maybe I generally want to add a bit of more of a contrast so I can add curves to this and change the contrast here a bit. Maybe like so. And if we take a look now at my main, you see that now I get a completely different look. So you can control the look of your materials by using textures and then applying 
different effects to your textures to get the look that you want. And I think actually that it's a little bit too harsh. So what I want to do is I want to bring this back a little bit so that it's not so harsh and maybe just turn this down a bit like so. Let's take a look what this does. No, that's not what I want actually. This looks quite good because now the texturing is a little bit more subtle. Okay, now I can duplicate this material because I want to use this material and actually I also want to use it as my logo base. You see here I have my logo base material and if I delete this now and if I link these two up here and if I take a look at my logo, you see that nothing is happening and this is because you have to specify the materials inside the model node and here you see we have the materials and these are the materials that I loaded together with the obj through this mtl file and now I can change this by clicking here and you see that I have this mesh logo base and there is no material because I just deleted it and now I can choose my base tool here and now I can apply the same texture that I created for my base to the base of my logo. Now let's create another material and let's quickly set up the material for our ring here and in this case I want the diffuse to be black and if the color doesn't work then make sure that color from particle is set to zero. If you increase this to 100 then it will take over the color that is specified in the particle settings here. So if you want to specify a diffuse color inside your diffuse channel then make sure that this is set to zero. So color should be black in the beginning and I want this to be glossy as well so let's put in 80 here and in the reflection let's put in 85 and another thing that I want to mention if you go too crazy with these values it can get a little bit weird so if we set this back to white for a moment and if we set this to 100 and if we set this to really high value and if we take a look here at the edge now you see that now the reflection is, is really strong and this can create a little bit of a strange look so I always like to balance these values a bit and then this effect looks way better and, and way more nice but you see we can increase this for example here to get a little bit more vari variation here so this is a little bit more reflective but I want this to be black as I said in the beginning I will animate the look I will animate the color of this later. Now uh, again duplicate this material and I will use the same material for my logo. So let's bring this over here and again in my model node in the materials change this here to my ring material and now all my materials are set and are good to go. Now to make this even a bit more interesting I will add a second light. So let's select our light here and press Ctrl D and let me change this to 4 fuse again because it's way easier to position your lights like that. So let's take this light and let's move it back here and, and, and set axes and maybe turn it around a bit. Let's take a look where this is now. Now it is sitting beneath our logo which I do not want of course I want it to be high up here so let's drag it up here and you see now we get nice shading and now we can also change the light colors here so maybe we do something more interesting here something like that and maybe for this one we can choose something like bluish tint let's see what this does and you see that this creates a way more interesting look for our scene so our logo animation is nearly finished. You see I have a slight uh, intersection here, but you can correct this yourself. I don't want to waste too much time now because the tutorial is already quite long. So now I want to show you how you can create this nice particles, the 3D particles that I had in the preview. And therefore we create a new emitter and we create a new particle. Change this particle here from circle to model and make sure that you set the emitter speed to zero for now and I want to change the emitter type from 
point to ring and now let's change the size of the ring on 200 on the x-axis and now let's rotate it 90 degrees and you see now I have particles aligned around the edge of my base here. Now I want to add an OBJ here as well so let's add a model node and with this model node selected we go to file and browse and import a new file and I will use this square here and OK. And now you see that everything is messed up and this is because the square is just way too big. So let's go to our particles here, particle size and change this back to one. And you also see that now this renders quite slow because the scene is getting more complex. So what you can do there is you can first of all set this to half. And there is another nice option in Stardust. If you go to your render settings, you see we have these quality settings here. And if you choose medium here, then you will lose a bit of quality in your viewport, but you will gain performance. So this is very useful when working with more complex scenes. You can come in here always and change the quality settings here. So let's set this to medium and now let's take a look at my particles here and you see that something is wrong with the normals here so let me quickly let me quickly turn off the emitter here so that we can see this a bit better and if i go to medium or to high now and if you zoom in a bit you see that something is wrong with these particles so let's go to my model node and let's take a look what we can do here and actually in this case, you also have to change these flip settings here. And if I change this here, you see now they look right as they should. And if I turn this to full, then we see this even better. Now, another option that you have, and which is really spectacular, is if we turn this emitter on again, you have the option to add ambient occlusion. If I do this, let's take a look or take a close look at our scene, what happens if I turn on the ambient occlusion you see that immediately we get nice shadows and not only between our particles but also on the surface of our OBJs and this is really great. So you can use ambient occlusion. I can turn it off for now if I want because this will also gain the or improve the, the performance a bit but my system should be able to handle it so I will set this down to medium again. I will leave the ambient occlusion on and you see of course the, the quality of the ambient occlusion now is, is way lower but still we have this in here and have a little bit of a reference here of the shadows. Now let's go back to our 3D model here and let's change the rotation and I can do this by changing the rotation right here to 90 and now they are flat which is nice and I also want to make them smaller so let's see maybe the size down to 50 I think this is still too big maybe 30 not quite sure yet but we'll see let's say 40 for now this is good and now we will add a material and actually I can just copy my base material here so Control D again and then drag it down because actually I want to use the same settings but what I want to change here is in this case I do not want any texture because these are very small so we do not need the texture here. So I just turned off the texture in the class channel here. And now let's add a replica here so let's add the replica node. And if you link the replica now to this material here and change some settings, so let's say we want to have 80 replicates and we want these to offset for two, you see that nothing is happening. And this is because you have to uh, link this to the particles actually. So let's choose our replica here and let's link it to the particles here. And now it will only affect my 3D squares here but I do not want to offset it what I want to do is I want to scale it so I will scale it on the X for 5% so 105 and I also want to scale it on set 105 and this will create this nice radial pattern but you see now they're creating these these uh, straight lines which I do not like 
So to fill this a little bit better and to create something like a disk of, of these small squares here, I will go to my emitter and I will increase the number of particles that I have on my ring. So here we have the option ring particles and we increase this now to 96. And if I do that, you see now we have this nice disk here. And I think they are still a little bit too big. So I will go to my particles here or to my model. Oops, now I just deleted this connection here. So let's rearrange this. And I will just turn this down to 30 so that these are not so big. And I think this looks quite good, maybe even smaller. Let's make them 25. Okay, this looks good. And to make this even more interesting, I go to my replica now and now I change the inner angle a little bit. You have this just copy tab here. If you open up, you have this inner angle. And I will put in here a rotation of minus two on the X and plus two on the Y. And you see what this does. This creates these nice offsets here. And this really looks cool. Now, to make sure that everything looks right, let's quickly select our model again and let's select the smooth normals and let's turn this down to 10 so that we have no hard edges here. And you see now everything is smooth and everything looks really awesome. Now, only two more things to do here. So first of all, I will set up a nice camera move. Um, let's do this quickly. So to set up my camera move, I will specify an end position and let's say around frame 125 my end position will be 90 degrees like so and no actually minus 90 degrees because now i'm on the back side of my thing here and i will move it maybe let's see the position of the camera a bit further out to minus to 1250 or so like so this looks like a good end position so let's put in a keyframe here and let's put in a keyframe here and also on the Y rotation because it will change this a bit as well now let's go to the beginning here and let's take a look what we can do so first of all let's move in quite a bit so maybe like 450 or so actually minus 450 is the right value then we are really close here now let's rotate it a bit. So I will put in here 60 degrees on the Y and I will lower this here to minus, let's say minus 10. Let's take a look what this does. And this is pretty cool. Now you see we move first of all through our squares here. Then our logo flies in and now everything is revealed and looks really good. And another thing that I did, which is looking really great, I added a turbulence node. So let's add the turbulence node here. And now let's just link this to our replica system. And what we can do here is we can offset the position a little bit, not too much. So let's set this to 10 for now. Let's take a look what this does. And you will see that this changes the position of our small particles here. But actually, I want the noise scale to be way higher. So let's put in here 500 and let's take a look what this does. And this should change this a little bit to, to bigger patterns here. And now I also want to offset the rotation. So let's set this to 100. And I also want to offset the scale. Let's set this to 100. Now you see that our small particles reflect the lights and actually the offset of the scale is a bit too harsh. So let's turn this down a bit so that it has some effect, but not that much. And this looks really cool. And now I can increase the scale even further, maybe 750. So that changes the patterns that we see here a bit. Now they are bigger like that. This looks really great. And now we can just to finalize this add an animation here to our turbulence and then to the materials here. So first of all, let's add an animation to our turbulence and we can set this instead of turbulence effect infinite, we can set it to sphere. Now we can specify an area where this turbulence is uh, 
affecting our particles. And now let's take a look wherever our, at what point in time our logo hits our base. This is actually right here. And exactly at this point in time, I want the turbulence effect to start. So let's go to our turbulence node here. And you see that you have the option here to change the sphere size. So let's take a look what we need so that we just cannot see it. If I set it to 200, you see that it just starts here. So I will set it to 190. And now you see it does not affect any particles. So let's set a keyframe here on 190. Let's press U to only see the keyframes. And now let's say until frame 125, I will increase this to maybe 2000. Let's see what this does. And I think this should affect more or less everything here. And this looks really good. And now let's change one more thing. And this is the color of our material of the logo. And therefore we go to our ring material here inside the logo node. And here I want to change three things actually. First of all, I will change the color. So let's go to the diffuse. And this should change, let's say, within the last 10 frames or so, it should start. So I will set a keyframe here for the color, press U to make this visible. And then maybe for 20 frames, over 20 frames, I want to change this to something bright, really bright blue, like so. And now I want to reduce the gloss amount here. So let's move back to this keyframe here and let's set a keyframe for gloss and reflection here. Let's move forward to the next keyframe and let's set both of these to zero and you will see what this does. And this will have the effect that now this color will look like it's glowing. Now this material looks like it's a glowing material and this is exactly what I want. What I can do now is I can simply duplicate this material again because now I have all these animations in here. Now delete this one here on my ring. And you see that it actually took over the material here. So I do not have to come into the material node here and change anything. So you see what's happening now. Now the color of our logo is changing. I think that this is happening a little bit too late. So let's shift these a little bit. So let's take all these and shift them to like so. And now let's make this turbulence animation a little bit longer, something like that. And that looks quite good. Now I will create a quick RAM preview that we see what we have got so far. And I will be back when the RAM preview is finished. Okay, so the RAM preview is finished and it lasted only a few minutes, so I think about two and a half to three minutes. And if you take a look here, what we have got, I mean, it's pretty impressive. You have these shiny particles with metal textures reflecting the lights. And this is made on only one layer using only one plugin. I think this is it's really awesome. And it is really changing the way how you can create these kind of scenes simply within After Effects. Of course, you can take a bit more time and I would actually recommend to do so to create a more awesome look by adding backgrounds, by adding a bit more glows, by adding some color correction and of course, depth of field and just optimizing the timing of the animation. But this is up to you. I really hope that you liked this tutorial, that you learned something from it. If you do not have Stardust already, again, I recommend to jump over to their website, which is www.superluminal.tv and get this awesome particle system. So I thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.